no, I didn't say, she said school choice. I didn't say school choice. She did. No. Why right. can't you support school choice then? Why can't you talk about charter schools? Why can't you talk about a voucher system like libertarians have been talking about for a long time? We've been saying this and you say that school choice is racist. You are bought and paid for by them. You just made a case for school choice while saying that you hate school choice. <laughs> Question of the day, let me ask this. Do you think too much attention is actually being given to Alexandria, uh, Nina Pinta, Santa Maria Cortez, or is it pretty clear that the left is headed in a specific direction here, namely socialism, so leaders like Cortez need to be addressed and their views need to be dissected. There are a lot of people saying, why are you giving yeah. this person all, this, all of this attention? I, I understand, I understand that she's just yeah. one person, but I also understand that there are a lot of people who see her as a symbol for the Democratic Party and certainly want the party to go in that direction. So I'm curious to hear what you guys think. It could be yes to both. By the way, I think it's possible. I'll make that point later. It's possible. Uh, so I recently tweeted Cortez asking for in response to her asking for examples of systemic discrimination in the United States today. Uh, she responded with the following. I think we have her tweets right here. She responded in uh, K through 12 education, mass incarceration, bl banks targeting Black Americans before the housing crisis. Mm -hmm. Um, she's been cordially invited to appear on the show, by the way. Uh, haven't heard back. As far as I know, here's something important as well. She's never appeared on a show with an opposing viewpoint. No. Ever. I can't find it. I, I've never found it. We've been doing research all morning. Please all tweet me, uh, leave a comment. If there's a video of her going on a conservative show, a show that would hold her feet to the fire, or where there'd be any kind of debate, right. please let me know. As far as I understand, she exclusively preaches to the convert. So we're forced to go through a tweet because she wouldn't appear on the show. And yes. uh, by the way, I was stunned that these were the examples she chose because these are examples <laughs> that a first year sort of diversity studies, stu gender studies, take your pick. I don't know if diversity studies are real <laughs> thing. Gender it's studies. so new to her. It's, it's a layout. It's like a first semester <laughs> yeah. philosophy college student would pick these, and they are some of yeah. the most easily debunked. So, uh, as something else too, as we go through these, here's something to keep in mind. Uh, of course, you've all heard, Correlation doesn't equal causation. But right. more importantly here, disparity doesn't equal discrimination. We'll come back yes. to that later. So let's go through point one, school funding. Okay, right away, off the top, uh, schools aren't segregated. Mm -hmm. There are no white schools and black schools by law. So it can't be about race when we're talking about systemic discrimination. So let's right. take a look at what could actually be causing the funding disparity. First of all, if you actually bother to read the WAPO article yeah. that she is referencing, she doesn't actually put it in the tweet. She that just says, look it work. up. Look <laughs> Buy a book, okay? <laughs> Look it up. Get the person knocking your door at the encyclopedia. Just splurge. You'll find it. <laughs> it's real. Google it. <laughs> so you find the disparity, by the way, in the original law. It has nothing to do with race. Um, and it has nothing to do with the system. It's, it's really based on how money is raised from property taxes. Yeah, and they did that because they wanted more local control. Surprisingly, yes. they wanted to make sure if they sold a bond that they, that you had a really high bar to clear so that the local residents said yes to that bond. Right. Something that she would probably champion. By the way, the system in question, that specific article, uh, the state budget actually gave more to non-white schools. Oh. Just to keep in mind. Well, that's awkward. But she does have, she does make a point here. And I, this is where I agree with Cortez. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense that people should be forced to attend a specific school just because they live in a crappy district. She yeah. even mentioned this, by the way, on an interview where she talked about needing to change the way when she wasn't trying to uh, obfuscate with, it's racism. When she was talking about, in an interview, the way school funding needs to change, here's what she said. One of the things that we really need to reassess when we talk about economic inequality and reducing economic inequality is our basic system of funding schools. The basic idea that the immediate property taxes of a certain zip code funds that local public yeah. schools. Because mm -hmm. then what it does, it creates this mad sure. dash. Um, I think by kind of re-examining how, how we even Are there fund goldfish in her shoes? Is one of the basic <laughs> things that we take for granted, but it could actually be one of the strongest keys in unlocking um, the opportunities of children in the United States. <gasps> what? School choice? Yes. No, no, no! I didn't say, she said school choice! I didn't say school choice! She did. No, she never! Did. You just made an argument for school. Why right. can't you support school choice then? Why can't you talk about charter schools? Why can't you talk about a voucher system like libertarians have been talking about for a long time? We've been saying this, and you say that school choice is racist. Why? Because you have to appease the big unions who give far mm -hmm. more than big oil or the Koch brothers mm -hmm. or Rupert Murdoch. Big unions, particularly if you look at public sector unions and public education unions, you are bought and paid for by them. You just made a case for school choice while saying that you hate school choice. Exactly. <laughs>
<laughs> even if you agree with the premise here when you're talking about school funding, yeah. you have you have to follow the logic trail, or you have to follow their logic trail that more money would equal better success in school. Right. That's not true. No. Higher per spending pupil does not equate to greater success. There is no. that's a great example where there isn't even a correlation. Right. You couldn't say that correlation equals causation, but there are schools that have more funding, like in Detroit, than the national average yeah. that do horribly, and then there are schools DC. that have far less funding that do much better. For example, there's some schools in certain districts of New York where they couldn't understand. They're going, hold on a second. They have bigger classroom sizes. Yeah. Uh, they don't have the same amount of spending per pupil, and they were doing far better because of better teachers and incentives. I mean, there's a, there are a multitude of She reasons. probably should have just stayed away from this. Public, public education has been a train wreck for a very, very, very long time, and this distracts from right. a real issue. Like she, It's like she just tried to pick out like three basic things and say, well, that'll work. Yeah. Right? There's an article that I can there's link to. There's a disparity <laughs> in education. So and it's all about money. Check mate. <laughs> Even though we've proven that it's not I about money. I think this tweet, this tweet speaks for itself, and I think the conversation needs no further discussion. <laughs> but that's the kind of responses the, you would get, by the way. The next point, by the way, mass, she just points to mass incarceration, uh, which doesn't really give us a whole lot to no go context. on. But she's probably referring to this idea that the criminal justice system unfairly targets bl blacks through drug policies, right, prosecutes yeah. them unfairly. It's, it's a common talking point. Uh, amongst the left. Here, here's just a video that's an example. Drug laws were made in explicitly racist circumstances for explicitly oh. racist reasons. For example, really? the first anti-cocaine laws were made because cocaine supposedly made black men impervious to bullets and prone to getting involved with white women. First off, uh, that's not true. Second, I think she's trying to imply here that people on crack or people on meth aren't more likely to commit violent crimes. Hmm. There are some Japanese kamikaze pilots who'd like to speak with you. <laughs> Also, by the way, exactly. the whitest people on earth, the Aryans, the Nazis, they were messed out of their minds. These like, it is absolutely true that people who do hardcore drugs, particularly yes. stimulants like crack cocaine and methamphetamine, commit more crimes. I don't know why they're like, it's, it's racism. No, no. They crash planes into Pearl Harbor <laughs> when they do those drugs. That's why. <laughs> to go to the, the argument at large, because she just said incarceration. Yes, yeah. black people make up a disproportionate percentage of the prison population. But they also commit a disproportionate percentage of the crimes. They commit murder, for example, at more than double the rate of white Americans. Okay? Yeah. And again, if you look more closely, you can find reasons for the disparity uh, in the drug crimes, specifically, that they mention uh, that don't equal discrimination. Yes, okay? Here's a good example. 81% of crack cocaine defendants are black. But only 2% of meth defendants are black. Yeah. With 54% of them being white. That means that I math that. laws target whites 27 times more than blacks. Wow. See? We Racist. can play that game too. Math targets <laughs> targets whites. I bet if you were to include people who have sex with their sister, it's probably 84 times <laughs> more <laughs> than blacks. By the way, according to the stats, heroin is the wonder drug that bridges the racial divide. And that's just good <laughs> shit. Everyone loves heroin. I don't care. You white, you yellow, heroin is just plain good You've got business. that right. I'm glad it brought us together. We'll be in trouble. So but let me ask you this. Are meth laws, are they anti-white? Any more than crack laws or anti-black? Different demographics commit different types of crime. That's why there's a disparity. There is a through line uh, through all these disparities. For example, not doing well in school or ending up uh, in prison. Uh, see if you can guess. Before that, though, hit the notification bell uh, since subscriptions don't mean anything anymore. And uh, Jew, actually, uh, do a... Uh, I said Jew. You said Jew. 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 You uh, racist. Uh, Omar on the brain. The <laughs> Jew. The Jew. They mind trick you into hitting notification bell. Uh, hit the, the notification Jews, bell. Apparently. Do bookmark the page because <laughs> yeah. they might do a notification. Block, anyway. Subscribe on iTunes. All right, let's continue like this is going well. So the point, the third point she makes is that banks are targeting minorities, right? That yeah. banks, she, Cortez claims that targeted black Americans. I wouldn't use the word targeting, mm -hmm. but okay, let's go with your premise. <laughs> there, there is validity, Miss Cortez, to your claim. Uh, why? Because of your party. Here's Cuomo. Housing agents who say, well, there are no vacancies right now. That you just didn't qualify for the mortgage because your financial credit history wasn't good enough. Well, that sounds valid. Reasonable. Last mm -hmm. year, the Federal Reserve Board found African Americans are denied credit for homes at twice the rate white Americans are. What? Twice the rate? That's oh, almost wow. two times more. <laughs> twice, twice the rate. 27 times the rate of prosecution of white Americans for meth. 80, what is it? 80-something times the prosecution of black uh, Americans for, for crack cocaine. Twice the rate. Twi Let's just use numbers. Twice the rate. Okay. What was the credit score? <laughs> What was the money down? What was the income? We can play that game too. We just want to say that white people got 
bank lo home loans at twice the rate, therefore racism? That's not how you look into statistics. Your party targeted banks, told them they had to lend to more people of color, That's regardless right. of yes. income ability, yep. money down, or credit score. A uh, Cuomo himself established the affordable housing goals, which gave Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac annual quotas for giving low-income mm. mortgages. I've never understood this predatory, how could banks profit from giving loans to people who couldn't possibly pay them back? Why would banks target them? It it's like a shark targeting a fish to throw up food in its mouth. <laughs> It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> it was government policies that targeted low-income individuals yes. with these loans and caused the housing crisis. They required banks to give out loans to people who couldn't pay them back or face the consequences. A bank is typically in the business of making money! <laughs> By the way, you know who Live didn't have a problem getting a home? The black doctor. Just so you know, just, just <laughs> that's one thing that they always show in movies that's completely inaccurate. Do you, think, do you think Ben Carson would walk into a bank and the response be, well, everything here checks out, but we don't take kindly to your coloreds around here. <laughs> but it's, it's money in the bank. I mean, basically paying 80% down. We don't care. We'd rather <laughs> lose money on a good white feller. That's what happens in these movies. Yeah, a black guy a walks castle. in for a bank, a bank loan. He walks in. He's got a wife and kids. He's got a job. He's got a perfect credit score. He's got all the money down. And they're like, well, I would give it to you if you weren't a Negro. <laughs> that's, how it, that's not how it, it no. works in the real world. No, especially That's with right. the, Are there some racists, about. by the way? Of course there yes. are. But to try and act like the housing crisis was caused by banks targeting black people to make sure that they take the money they could never pay back, it just shows a, a lack of any threat well, of logic. Runs, Listen, I'm not saying that there aren't examples of individual racism, of course, but sure, I yeah. asked for examples of discrimination. What she gave me and you by proxy. Here's something else too. People say, why do you focus on her so much? She's an elected official. Yeah. She is paid by our tax dollars. It is, it's not punching up, looking to, to gain ratings. Her job is to respond to her constituency. Mm -hmm. That's her job. It is entirely appropriate to respectfully ask for her to answer these questions. She gave examples of discrimination uh, that were actually just disparity. That's all it was. Yeah. By the way, um, that doesn't mean there aren't any problems with what she's outlined there. There certainly are examples yeah. of discrimination. This is, though, what she's done is, it's a symptom of a syndrome, okay? That there is a problem that only government can fix to right yeah. the racial mm -hmm. injustices of the past. There's a common denominator, by the way, that I talked about, I said I would come back to it, that could lead to this disparity among any race, white, black, yellow. What could, let me ask this, what could possibly be the po uh, common denominator, okay, that could lead to a disparity in success in school? That would also possibly lead to a disparity in incarceration rates or saving up enough money to get a home. Let me, let me answer that with an anecdote, anecdote first followed by some data, okay? I was at a baby shower this weekend. Uh, my wife was out of town, so I had to attend, and I brought Betty, our puppy. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. Uh, so it was all the parents and their kids, and Betty's a puppy, and so we're trying to socialize her with as many dogs and as many kids as possible. Yeah. She's out there running around playing. There was this boy who was screaming, by the way. Anytime he wanted attention, just ah, ah, scream, shove mm. another kids in the bouncy hop. He walked up and punched Betty in the ribs Ooh. as hard as he could, just right where the spine meets the ribs, just <laughs> sounded just like that. Ow. And then he walked up and he yanked on her tail and he looked me, Johnny Boy was there, looked me in the eyes and started stepping on her tail after I told him to stop. Now. Oh, he gonna die. I say this because <laughs> um, if it were Hopper, he probably would, probably would have bitten the kid because yeah. he's older, he doesn't play that, right? And yeah. that's another, another problem I have. People are like, oh, dog. No, if you punch a dog in the ribs, you're kind of asking for it. But yeah. uh, it, the racist would look at that and say, oh, black kid. But you know what I saw? I saw a kid at that baby shower with the only mother without a wedding ring or a father. He was the only kid there without a dad. And as far as I know, he doesn't have a dad. Now, I could give that kid free school for life. I could give him a guaranteed job. I could walk up and hand that mom a million dollars and it wouldn't make a sh of a difference because he doesn't have a dad. So because he was black? No. All kids do poorly without dads. Yeah. They're more likely to drop out of school, to commit crimes, to be violent, to have psychological problems or behavioral disorders, to have marital problems of their own down the line, to make a lower income across the boards. Okay? Black kids do poorly without a dad. White kids do poorly without a dad. But 73% of black kids don't have a dad. But because right. Cortez sees blacks as a voting block, she then interprets all of these disparities as discrimination. 
But there really is at least one easily explainable reason for this, or at least one correlation that makes sense across the board. Kids who don't have dads do poorly in life. Now, the left has been accusing the right of using this as a cop-out for all these disparities, which clearly are examples of systemic discrimination, and uh, only, only, only if you really looked at the systemic problems of racial injustice, uh, only, you know what, here's the truth. If you look at them, you examine them, just like they don't exist. Yeah. The largest part of this solution is right in front of your faces, their faces, our faces, but the left couldn't possibly acknowledge it because that would be dabbling in the realm of moral absolutism or maybe passing judgment. And we couldn't have the leaders of the DNC doing that. We couldn't have them saying, you know what? Huh, let me use my sound judgment here. It seems that there is a strong correlation here, and I do believe there could be some causation, that kids without dads don't do well. If we're going to try and socially engineer people, why don't we look at something that is undeniable and encourage men to be better husbands, fathers, dads in the household. You do that, you'd fix a lot, you certainly would fix a lot of problems. Not all of them, but everybody would have a better head start at least. But we're not supposed to talk about it. The DNC could never do that. Cortez, the intellectual heavyweight for them. Okay, if you like this video, you know, you watch videos on YouTube. If I were Jimmy Kimmel, if I were Stephen Colbert, or Trevor Noah, I would tell you to subscribe. But I have no corporate overlords who demand that I do this demeaning promo. I do the demeaning promo because I choose to. Subscribe or hit the notification bell because I need you. I need you. Please do it.